it's important that you can determine about how much energy will be in each trophic level in an ecosystem. First, we'll look at figuring out about what percent of the original chemical energy has made its way into each trophic level. We'll start with the producers. The producers produce the chemical energy through the process of photosynthesis. So they have 100% of the original chemical energy because they're the ones that produced it. Now only 10% of the energy gets passed from one trophic level to the next. So the insects only get 10% of the chemical energy that was in the plants. Now the lizards only get 10% of that. And so the way to keep going down the food chain is just to continue to move the decimal place over one spot. So with 100%, the decimal would have been there. 10%, you can see I moved it over one spot and got 10. When I move it over again, I'll get 1%. And when I move it over again, I get 0.1%. It gets reduced by 10% with each trophic level as the decimal just keeps shifting over one place at a time. So here I've got a little longer food chain. Algae are my producers, so they have 100%. I'll move it over one, get 10%. Move the decimal again, 1%. Move it again, 0.1%. And move it again, 0.01%. Now this final food chain shows us a very important fact. The sun, while being an incredibly important source of solar energy, is not a source of chemical energy. So I still start by putting 100% on the producer. But that's what you have to be careful for if you just started by putting 100% on the sun without really thinking about it and moving your decimal over, then you would have uh, gotten the wrong number on every organism. So making sure that you put 100% on the right spot will make sure that you get the right answer on whatever they ask for. Now they could also give you an amount of energy, a certain number of calories or kilocalories or joules, and you would be expected to figure out how much of that energy made its way at each trophic level. You do it the same way. So let's say they told us that 10,000 kilocalories were in the plants the insect population would only get 10% of that. So I just move the decimal place over once. And 10,000 becomes 1,000. So 1,000 kilocalories in the insects. The lizards only get 10% of that, so I just move the decimal over again. And 100 kilocalories are in the lizard population, and the snakes would only get 10. So looking at the next food chain, let's say they told us that 25,000 kilocalories were in the algae. Well, that would mean that 2,500 kilocalories were in the zooplankton population, that 250 kilocalories were in the minnow population, 25 in the perch, and 2.5 in the hawk population. Notice that I just keep moving where the decimal would be over to the left, making it smaller each time. And finally, let's say that they told us that there were 60,000 kilocalories in the phytoplankton population. Remember, the sun is not a source of chemical energy. So that would mean that there were 6,000 kilocalories in the krill and 600 in the humpback whale population. So you can see that you basically do it exactly the same way as percentages. You just move the decimal over on the amount of energy they give you instead of a percentage. So let's go through a few practice problems to make sure you understand. So first, what percentage of energy available in the plant population will reach the sparrow population based on the food chain shown above? Well, plants have 100% of the energy because they produced it. And that would be 10, 1, and 0.1. And they asked me how much would reach the sparrow population, and so that is 0.1%. The second question says if 2,500 kilojoules of energy are available in the plant population in a given area, approximately how many kilojoules of energy would be expected in the spider population? 
So I'll start by putting 2,500 over the plants. That would give me 250 over the aphids, 25 over the spiders, and 2.5 over the sparrows. And you can see they asked me about the spider population, so the answer is 25. This concept works exactly the same way with energy pyramids. So looking at question number three, which organism represents the trophic level containing approximately 1% of the initial amount of chemical energy produced in this ecosystem? So algae are our aquatic producers. They produced 100% of that. And then go 10%, 1%, and 0.1%. And they wanted to know which one would get approximately 1%. And so that is the minnow population. Question 4 says, if 25,000 kilocalories of energy are available in the algae population, approximately how much energy would be in the bass population? So I'll start by putting the 25,000 on the algae. And that would mean 2,500 or 2,500 on the copepods. Then 250 on the minnow. And then 25 on the bass. So there would be 25 kilocalories in the bass population. Question 5. Approximately what percentage of the original chemical energy produced by the plant population would be present in the population of lizards? Well, there's 100% on the plants, then 10% on the insects, then 1% on the lizards, and then 0.1% on the snakes. And they asked me about the lizards, so the answer is 1%. And this final question is about making sure you understand the concept. About 10% of the energy at one trophic level is passed to the next level. What usually happens to the energy that is not passed to the next trophic level are used to carry out life processes. And that is what these squiggly arrows coming off either side of these organisms represents. It represents the heat that is given off. So only 10% of the energy goes on to the next level, much of the 90% that doesn't make it to the next level is lost to the environment as heat. And that's a very important understanding about this concept.